first, I would like to say a huge thank you for Aidan Photography Center for organizing this event and uh, having me here. Uh, Rosa and Andre asked me to talk about the history of vernacular photography research in Hungary, but I also uh, put private, the word private, uh, in brackets here, and I will come back to this um, a bit later, why, why I uh, did this uh, comment. Uh, my name is Judith Geller. I defended my PhD last year, and um, my topic was uh, private memory in contemporary Hungarian photography uses of analog and digital archive. Uh, I know this is a huge topic. Um, this is a very common problem of PhD students and first book authors. So I divided the topic into two bigger parts. Um, first, I dealt with the analog photography, um, the theory of um, of photographs because my main questions were how can an everyday image, a private photograph, uh, became a part of an artwork or how it can become a work of art? And the other question was uh, what's the difference between amateurs and uh, professionals? So these were my core questions. Uh, in the first part, in the theory, um, I mainly um, dealt with um, the theory of Artusi Danto, the transfiguration of the commonplace. His um, book uh, I tried to uh, transform to photographs. Then I dealt with the private photography. Uh, what are the topics, the habits, um, what tools uh, people use in, in private photography, what kind of collections we have uh, in Hungary, and what kind of researches uh, we have in Hungary. Then uh, I wrote a little bit about the history of uh, private photography as um, a part of the contemporary art media. And in the fourth uh, part, I introduced uh, some Hungarian artworks uh, that reflected uh, on these phenomena. Um, sometimes um, they use uh, analog photography, and uh, sometimes uh, they were just uh, influenced by these, um, these topics. And the second part is about the digital, how the digital turn transformed um, with the smartphones and the, the web applications and uh, mobile phones has changed all these habits and um, all the um, influence uh, on, on private photography. So these were the two parts, and uh, today I would love to uh, talk about um, the private photos in collections, and uh, I will introduce a few Hungarian artworks. So in the first part, um, I was in struggle how to call this phenomena, what uh, term to use, what uh, word to use, because it has different words, different terms in Hungarian. Um, sometimes it is not even decided how to write it uh, grammatically correctly, because sometimes it is one word, sometimes we divide it, it into uh, two parts. And um, as I'm not a native uh, English uh, speaker, but I also wanted to uh, find some uh, English word or English term uh, for this uh, phenomena. And I decided to use a private photo in Hungarian. Um, of course, I wrote the dissertation in, in Hungarian. And then I, I used the word uh, or term private photography in English, according to Patricia Holland, because um, I think private photography is a much bigger topic than uh, simply family photographs. It is also depends on who takes the photograph. Is it a professional or is it an amateur? Is it a staged photography or is it a captured moment? And uh, also who takes a look at this picture 
um, and where is this picture? Are the relatives uh, still alive and can tell us uh, stories about the pictures or are we just uh, researchers who are looking at these images? So I use the word uh, private, um, that's why I, um, I wanted to uh, comment uh, on this. The researches of uh, private photographs um, in Hungary started in the early 80s in an institution uh, called Institute for Cultural Research. This was a department uh, of uh, the of a bigger uh, institution that was a state-funded institute and dealt with pop popular culture. And uh, it was Ivan Vitani, who was a sociologist as well as an aesthete, who became the di director of the institute in 1972. And uh, he was um, influen influenced researcher to start to deal with, uh, with photographs, especially with uh, private uh, photographs. The institution had uh, different names uh, during the decades, more or less uh, according to uh, political uh, regimes and aims, and also the function of the institute. But our main uh, topic, the private photo program, uh, started in 1982. This was a um, project by uh, Peter Forgács, who is an artist, and who invited András Bán as well as an art historian to start this research. They did not have um, too much um, methodologies uh, previously, so they started to um, develop new methods on how to research amateur and private photography. The first period was an accu accumulation period when they started to collect photographs. It was the Feu Photo, the, um, we call it Metropolitan Photographic Company, which was a, a state-founded company and uh, they were um, developing and uh, enlarging pictures that uh, amateurs uh, bring in uh, the films. Uh, also, they took some portrait photographs, so this was a state-funded uh, institution, and um, anyone was able to bring their films and, uh, and ask them for uh, developing them. They used uh, huge uh, rolls of films where they enlarged these uh, pictures. And there was a person who was responsible for checking the images. And uh, when an image uh, or a picture was um, not good enough in the sense of um, a technical problem, for example, or uh, in the sense that it was um, a taboo for uh, the socialist regime, then they uh, used a pen and uh, signed the, the image and they cut out uh, this picture and it went uh, into the trash bin. The researchers of the private photo program uh, got a permission to uh, collect and uh, examine these images. Um, so they were um, interested in uh, the, the main aim of this private photo program was to uh, research the everyday photography habits, the subjects and topics of uh, what people are photographing as private uh, photographers or amateur uh, photographers. Uh, so sometimes they also used uh, the images from the trash bin, then they uh, washed uh, out uh, these, um, these signs and uh, they started to make the collection. In this collection, they labeled the photographs as uh, the subject topics uh, that uh, the pictures had. These labels or categories were um, more, more or less uh, about life events. The most um, 
common topics that we have on private photographs, such as holidays or uh, the big events of uh, life as uh, wedding, the birth of a child, um, or um, yeah, the Christmas and uh, other holidays as well. In the second uh, part of the research, uh, in the late uh, 80s, uh, they also collected uh, some uh, family histories. So they re-photographed family albums and made interviews with, uh, with people about uh, their uh, family stories and their stories uh, about their pictures. And they also organized some, organized some talks, uh, event, events, conferences, and um, uh, translated some texts uh, from English or other languages, uh, French uh, to Hungarian, and started to publish um, uh, some workbooks, readers. Um, one of the reader was about uh, especially private uh, photographs, and the title was uh, I have the same picture, only it's a different kid, referring to that uh, all these kind of pictures has uh, the same, same topics, or we can find the same topics in different uh, family albums. They were in trouble with, uh, with publishing these images because um, um, they were not, uh, m most of them were anonymous, so they did not know who is on the picture and they didn't want to share it um, with public. Um, so yeah, I will come back to this later again. And uh, it was in 2008 uh, when Andrés Ban published his book uh, Towards the Visual Anthropology, which is also a reader and um, he collected um, some of his uh, writi writings about uh, private photographs. Um, there was um, an exhibition about uh, this research in 1989, but unfortunately I do not have any material uh, about this, so mm, I didn't find any documentation about how this uh, exhibition looked like. There was another important uh, publication. This is a dictionary of symbols. Uh, Jörg Seger was uh, also a part of uh, this uh, private photo research uh, program. And he wrote this book before the regime change, but uh, it was only published um, in 1998. It's a dictionary of symbols. It has the categories, as I mentioned before. And in this book, he used uh, some pictures from the private photo uh, programs collection. But as you can see, uh, they um, cover the eyes um, of, the, of the person in the books uh, or uh, in, in the publication. And um, another important uh, collection started in these years, in the early 80s. It is the collection of uh, Sándor Kardos. This is uh, the Horus archives that I will not talk about right now because we will have the honor uh, to have uh, Sándor Kardos here and he will talk about uh, his collection and uh, maybe also about uh, books and how this uh, collection was made up. So these researches were uh, more about uh, finding new methods of uh, visual anthropology and about how to um, collect research and, and publish these images. And it was very much influential uh, for Erno Kunt as well, who was one of the founder of the Department of Cultural and Visual Anthropology program uh, in th at the University of, of Miskolc and also at the University of Erta in 1990. Uh, both, uh, they started these university programs of uh, researching um, private photographs in 1993. Uh, so 
these departments are uh, still exist and uh, and they also organize some programs and and they have a PhD program as well. In the early 2000s, an add-on method came in, uh, an add-on archive, which is the Fortepan that I will also not talk about because Miklós Tamás is here, who will uh, tell us more about uh, this uh, collection and, uh, and the website. So the other part of my lecture is about the art scene, how these uh, private photography phenomena uh, influenced the art world and uh, how artists uh, started to be more interested in private photographs. So the uses of photo archives became um, more uh, hyped in, in the early 2000s, maybe because of uh, the borders opened uh, from Hungary to abroad, so uh, there were some uh, new magazines and there was the chance to uh, travel abroad and uh, to see other um, artworks as well. So it was only in the 2000s when artists started to uh, deal with uh, with photographic archives. Uh, also, uh, after the regime changed in 1989, new institutions appeared in Hungary. Uh, one of uh, the type of the new institutions were commercial galleries that dealt with photography. The first one was the Bolt Photo Gallery, which opened in 1994. They, have, uh, they had a publication of their exhibitions, which is um, now uh, digitized and can be reached on, a, on an issue website. So all of their exhibitions had a catalog and uh, we can uh, use them as, uh, as researches uh, right now. Vintage, vintage Gallery was uh, one of the first uh, commercial galleries that dealt with photography and, and still exists. It was the first gallery that uh, went to Paris Photo from Hungary, for example. So they started to deal with photography as um, part of the art world as well as uh, part of the commercial field of the art scene. The first um, institution for photography is the Hungarian Museum of Photography, which uh, was established in 1991 uh, by Károly Kincses, uh, was uh, the first leader of uh, the, the museum. He started to build the collection, and uh, it was um, Galerie Maimano, now the Maimano House, uh, which was a part of the museum, but it was in Budapest, so they were able to make exhibitions uh, out of the collection of the museum uh, in the Maimano House. And the newest uh, photography center that deals with exhibiting uh, photographs is uh, the Kappa Center, which was established uh, 10 years ago. So these were also influenced uh, artists uh, to deal with uh, photography as a profession. Also a bit uh, history of the education and the grants uh, and scholarships um, for um, art photography scene. Because the first uh, university program was here at MoMA in 1984. It, um, um, it was the only university program by that time. So before that, it was the studio of young photographers Hungary who dealt with um, teaching photography and um, they had some grants as well and uh, the education uh, was their role. After the university courses um, came alive, uh, the function of the studio changed a lot, but uh, today it still exists. It uh, has um, members under 35 and they also uh, organize some lectures, programs, field trips, as well as, as workshops, but the function is, is different. 
So it, so it was um, uh, new uh, photography programs that were um, uh, available for, for photographers to study. And there were some grants that uh, helped them financially to work on some projects. One of the most important is the Pechi Oje Photography Grant, which gives um, a one-year grant uh, for photographers, and um, they had the chance to experience and work on new uh, photographic uh, series. Also, the National Cultural Fund scholarships help artists to work on their projects for one year. So these these are influential and these are very helpful for artists to work um, with, with photography. As I mentioned before, it was in the 2000s when artists started to that with private photography, so now I would like love to introduce a few artworks uh, from Hungary. One of the first early work was uh, the Tisza people by Peter Pettendi Szabó. Uh, in 2000, there was an industrial catastrophe and a cyanide uh, poisonous flood came over the river Tisza and uh, all the fishes, oops, uh, all the fishes uh, died out uh, from the river. So Peter uh, started to talk with the fishermen who, has, who lost their jobs. And he asked them if they have any private photographs or family photographs um, about their uh, catches. And of course, every fisherman has a picture of the big catch. So the color image is, uh, is the private photograph from the family album. And the black and white was made by Peter. It was in the same place, but in a different time. So we can see in the before and after how these people were affected by this poisonous flood. And uh, it was a bit, I don't know why it's this thing. Uh, so it was a bit uh, against the documentary photographs or press photographs that appeared in newspapers. Uh, it was more personal and it was a story that was more uh, understandable for people what uh, this kind of catastrophe means to, to families and to, to fishermen. Another artwork is by Agnes Eperjesi. Um, she collected uh, some wrappings from chocolates and sweets and other stuffs and um, used these um, wrappings, commercial wrappings as cutouts and uh, used these cutouts as negatives. So she created a family album that is um, a fictional, non-fiction um, family album because it follows the narrative of, um, of her own family album. We can see um, in um, chronological line the grandparents, the uh, parents when the ch children born and uh, when they went on holidays. So these are very common topics in family albums, but the pictures are not photographs but, um, but these uh, cuttings uh, from, from the wraps. Another artwork uh, that um, deals with uh, the very typical and uh, common uh, images we found in private photography albums is uh, Found Grandmother by Marcel Esterházy. I think he's uh, still uh, with us. So Marta was um, uh, raised up as he didn't know his, uh, his grandmas. So he decided that he will create one for himself. This is a found image. Um, we don't know who's the woman uh, on the picture, but uh, Marta um, 
scan the image and enlarged it into one meter times one meter. And the uh, title of the uh, image is Found Grandmother. So now he has um, a grandma. And it also refers on the phenomena of private photography, the typical types of, uh, of these images. And uh, the last one, uh, this is um, the work of uh, Gergely Barca. He collected uh, slides because he, he wanted to make some photographs for slides, so he went into some photo shops and in these shops, he, he, he bought uh, some slides, then he just uh, found out that there are images in the slides. So he started to deal with uh, these pictures, and once he got a whole family album in slides. So he started to research these images. He found a family, and um, these images were very much uh, detailed, so we know which image, when, and where was taken. And uh, he created out uh, from the slides a big installation, which is uh, three meter times three meter. This is a lightbox installation that is on view at OSHA archives. He used uh, the black and white sides of the slides to create a QR code. If you try this QR code, um, hopefully it, uh, it works and it will take you to a Facebook page where he um, published uh, the images. Of course, he changed the name of, uh, of the boy and uh, uh, of the two, two boys, but um, I found it very much um, uh, important because it um, it tells a story about how we, um, how smartphones and how social media apps and websites has changed our relation to private photographs and uh, with the uh, relation to public because the images that were previously in our uh, cupboards and shoe boxes and family albums are right now on the social media and can be reachable for anyone who wants to, to search for it. So uh, this is uh, uh, what I wanted to, to tell you today. Um, I hope you enjoyed it and um, yeah, thank you very much.